In order to take you down memory lane, I'm going to use this little guy, a GCN model of myself. And I'm going to pop him in the starting location of this ride in the Cotswold market town of Tetbury by the town hall. You join me in the town of Tetbury. It's an old Cotswold market town and the closest town to where I live. It's the perfect starting point to this video. I'm gonna take you down memory lane, show you the roads I've ridden on since the time I started cycling to present day. We're gonna ride past royal households, ride down ancient Roman roads, and I'm gonna show you some of the most beautiful villages in England. And it all starts from here. just leaving the town hall which sits behind me. But Tetbury was made famous and it is getting even more famous because it is the hometown for recently crowned King Charles III. And it's also home to Princess Anne, King Charles' sister. But it wasn't just the royals that really put this town on the map. It was also the yarn and wool industry. Now this place became incredibly pr prosperous in the Middle Ages because of the Cotswold lion sheep. And it was their fur that everyone wanted, especially in the Italians or the Italian merchants. And that's kind of why this place became so famous, I guess. I think everyone's got a road that they've ridden down or they've driven down more than anywhere else in the world. And this is that very road for me. I've ridden it a couple of million times probably. Who knows, but what's important about this very road is these trees that line it, this avenue of trees, dates back to my ancestors. It was my ancestors that actually planted it over 140 years ago. And it's quite something nostalgic about you know, my ancestors, great, great, great grandfathers, grandmothers walking down these very, this very lane. Just shows, doesn't it? Who would have thought that back in those days they'd be on horse and cart and I'm here on two wheels on a carbon bike, 140 years on. Now this is classic Cotswolds. You've got the beautiful green rolling hills and this little lane that winds its way through it. But I have to say, if you want to do this very ride, my perfect Cotswold ride, then you can do so by following the link down below in Kamut. It's 100K long with one big climb in it. But I'd love to see if you like it as much as I do. And uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think. But this says it all. I just kind of wish the weather was slightly better. Now, I couldn't take you on my perfect ride without showing you the perfect view. This is where I spend some of the best sunsets, just standing here and taking it all in. Look at it. Ah, oh, The one day I bring GCN here and... Anyway, this is a view that you can see the River Severn and you can also see all the way into Wales, to Monmouth. So to give you a little bit of geography of where we are, we're in the southwest of England, just by the Severn there. And you've got Dursley, you've got Bristol over there, you've got Wales, Monmouth, and over there, Gloucester. 
it's a good viewpoint, right? And it's also got a massive climb comes up it that man and I have done a few times. But this time we're going the other way to another epic climb, to one that I have been up around about 17 times in one day. It's where I spend most of the time doing hill reps. It's about time we head over there because, uh, well, the view's not at its best, is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> Beautiful cows. From the views of Froster Hill to the climb of the W, this is my test climb. This is a climb I've spent many years up and down. I remember doing about 10 or 16 reps up to this thing, flat out. It's the closest thing to an alpine climb in the Cotswolds. It's got two switchbacks, and I gotta say, I love and hate it. Oh, it's brutal. I'm not as fit as I once was, so feels like bloody Everest. Now this climb is synonymous with my pro career, the amount of time I spent riding up and down that, but it's also synonymous with my childhood. I actually went to school at the top of the climb at Bodeza Park School. I was four years old all the way till eight. And uh, I guess that all started my sporting career, running across this very common in cross country and, uh, and then led me on to riding professionally on a very bicycle. Takes me back. So this very climb is 2.57 kilometers long. It's got an average gradient around 6%, max gradient of 12%. And to be honest, I love this climb. I mean, I've held the Strava since 2017. I did a time at 5.45, it was the only one I really cared about. I should probably stop actually and find out if I uh, can still got the Strava. Oh no! Andrew Feather! Urgh. Sorry Hank, I think I've just stolen your care in. Okay, okay, look, look, let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Now the eagle-eyed viewers among you will notice that I'm not on my usual GCN bike. I've actually brushed off the dust from my old team bike, the Canyon Air Road, a bike I rode for two years, riding for Canyon DHB. And it's a bike that I spent years trading on these very roads. So I thought it was only right to bring it back to former glory. Get it out. I've got to say though, seeing as I'm not riding a bike as much as I once was, the position feels incredibly aggressive. It's long on the front end, it's low down, and it makes you want to go fast. But this is the time to bring it out, a video like this. So there you are, the old Canyon Air Road back to former glory. Wow, that is the beautiful St. Luke's Church or Chapel. Now that was built in 1843, and I guess it is, well, one of the most beautiful churches I've seen. Small, quaint, and stunning, really.
we just skirted along the boundary of Cirencester. Now, Cirencester is the Cotswolds biggest market town, and it's where I actually used to live. But this is one of the old Roman roads, so it's the White Way, and it basically takes you all the way to Cheltenham. We're going to break off though, and I'm going to show you one of the Cotswold gems, and it's known as Bybury. But let me tell you, this place is going to blow your mind. But for now, we're on this road where I've done many a chain gang all the way to Bybury. Now this brings back memories. When I used to do this ride during the summer months and it was boiling hot, I always used to look forward to this bit because it's where I was, used to fill up my bowl. Oh. The taste of the Cotswolds. Ah. Nice spring water. On we go. Now we are on the road towards the Roman villa. These are some beautiful roads. Look at that for a house and church. Look at that, it's beautiful. This is probably one of my most favorite views and sometimes I actually come here not on the bike, just for a walk because, I mean, look at it. Now, not far away is the Chedworth Roman Villa. Now, that is a villa that dates back to the second to the fifth century and it's one of the most elaborate Roman villas in Britain. And I've got to say, why well, it is genuinely amazing, but it's a mile that way and we're off that way. But what a place to stop. We're 60 kilometers in and we've arrived at Bybury, a quintessential Cotswold village. Now, the 19th century artist and craftsman William Morris called this one of the most beautiful villages in England. And I think I agree with him. Now, these are the 17th century Cotswold stone cottages with these steep Cotswold tiles there. But I mean, look at it. It is absolutely stunning. These winter months, the days are a lot shorter, so I need to be a lot quicker. But we've looked, looped back from Bybury. We've come into the busy streets of Sirencester. And now we're heading one of my local coffee stops. It's actually owned by a friend of mine. And we're going to dive in there for a quick flat white and a cake, because I need it. Here it is, the moment I've been waiting for, a good flat white. Oh yeah. Just dry the bone. No good bike ride can end without a good coffee stop, and this one is no different. I've stopped here at Ride 24 7 at the heart of Sirencester. It's owned by a friend of mine, and they sell, I mean, top end bikes. They've also got a beautiful workshop back there. But not only that, we also get to watch the bike racing here. I'll get it out in the end. And actually, we've got GCN on at the moment. Yeah, I think that was my doing. Yeah, I paid them to do that, if I'm honest. Anyway, before we head back on the bike and before it gets dark, I'm gonna show you a little bit around the shop and then we're gonna get back on the road. Right, time to finish this coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's dreamy. <laughs> Sorry, mate. The old Trek jerseys. This is amazing cycling, me cycling memorabilia. Eddie Merckx. Wow, you got 
uh, Schumacher when he got given his Ferrari, a wall of the Ride 24 7 jerseys, and one jersey that sticks out from them all. It's the GCN jersey. And uh, I mean, I've never seen Tade Pogaccio so big in my entire life. That is one yellow. And I don't know why, you know, these beautiful Oakley sunglasses haven't kept in fashion. I mean, look at them. Now, anyway, in all seriousness, David Miller wore these in the early 2000s. And if I'm honest, <laughs> I can see, kind of see why they haven't really taken off. <laughs> anyway, they're worth a bit £3,000 now, so um, I won't be buying any anytime soon. If there's one bike I want to get my hands on, it is this new Pinarello Dogma. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this very bike and that paint job. Right, it's about time we stop gazing at beautiful bikes and uh, I get back on the bike myself. Cheers. Here we go. Back home it is. So we're on the home stretch now. Filled up on coffee and cake. And now it's the last 20K before I get home, put one of these socks on, and have a nice warm bath. Nice. As the sun's gone down and it's now dark, we've arrived 100K later, through the Cotswolds and arrived back at my home. So here we are, 100K later, back in the castle. <laughs>